go. Hi everybody, Paul Richards here with PTZ Optics. And Matthew Davis. And today we're talking, it's vlog number 26, we're talking about Ooh. digital signage and 24-7 live streaming. Yeah, it's been a fun concept. I think both Paul and I have felt important and we both have kind of tried to drive forward and test and see what we can do. Okay, so today we're going to start with the computer. You need a computer, obviously. You need a streaming box to get this done. So let's start with number one. Woo, the computer. So I've got an opening of the box video here. Um, this is an i7 Nook, actually, mm -hmm. but we decided to use an i5 we had laying around. Yeah, we had a last generation i5 Intel Nook laying around, and we figured, why not put the thing to work? Um, yeah. I mean, we noticed that the i5 was not powerful enough to do um, the streaming that we wanted to do with 1080p. Mm -hmm. So this i7 here, third generation, I'm sure could do 1080p. Yeah, it should be able to handle 1080p. Um, part of it obviously comes down to the graphics cards. Intel does have its Skull Canyon series that's coming out soon that will have an yeah. external GPU. So you might be able to do even more funny, crazy bells and whistles wildness uh, with the coming Skull Canyon series. So that's the opening of the box there. Now number two is the server room. And this was something that... Uh, we tested out and I think it was actually really cool. Let's take you there. So now we're in the server room. Uh, and up here we've got our 24-7 live streaming PC, which is a last generation Intel Nook. Um, this is currently behind our firewall. Uh, yet again, if you can stream out to YouTube Live, you shouldn't need already, you shouldn't need to do anything special in your firewall to accommodate this. Uh, other than that, we're just going through the router uh, provided by Comcast. So if we were to take a look at where... The so before we take you to number three, which is coming up very shortly, uh, that, so you saw the server room, we showed yep. them the computer, um, we have log me in on yep. that computer, so that was a great idea, Matt, so we just remotely manage it. Yeah, doesn't uh, need a display, doesn't really need anything. If you don't have log me in, you could use TeamViewer. Um, you know, anything, if you're on your own local network, you don't need remote, remote access. There's always good old remote desktop provided in Windows. So before we take them into the lobby where we have the digital signage streaming, let's show the connection diagram here. Okay, so basically what we have going on, uh, we'll start with the streaming PC side on the left. We have the streaming PC connected to one of our switches. Um, you know, we obviously have other computers on that same switch. We're then going through our firewall, out to our router, and then out to YouTube Live servers. Um, what we're then able to do is either pull this content down back into our office for a local display, or pump it out to any mobile device or anything out in the real world. Now, Matt, you were talking about the bandwidth a little bit. Um, we're streaming in 720p, uh, it's 2.5 megabits. Mm -hmm. And then we're also coming, we're taking the video back from YouTube to our smart TV. Yeah, so for a lot of organizations, you know, bandwidth could be of concern. Um, as a little side note on that though, I would throw out that having devices watching your live stream or your content on YouTube can only be good for your SEO on that. Um, so depending on how much available bandwidth you have, it might be a consideration to either stream from the public internet, or if you're not able to do that for bandwidth constraints, um, you could run your own internal server, uh, like an RTMP server, uh, Unreal Media Server is a, a prime example of that, and then you could redistribute locally just using IP decoders in the office, uh, as well as streaming out to YouTube Live at the same time. <laughs> Yes, I mean, you can't get around streaming out, but you can, obviously, well, you can. Yeah, you, you could eliminate your your need for this content to be just, you know, pumped out to the outside world and then brought back into your facility um, if bandwidth was an issue. But really, that's what's exciting to me because now we're really doing two things. You know, we're advertising, we're marketing, we're streaming our content, and we have internal digital signage. Um, this is just a simplified version of thinking about this, where laptops on your network, around the world, smart TVs around the world. Yep. And then uh, one of the questions we got from our last video, they said, well, what if you want multiple channels? Because that's one of the big things that digital signage servers provide, is you know, the ability to have this channel, that channel, one for the lunchroom, one for the library. 
um, you would just add in a second streaming PC. That's exactly right. Cool. Well, I guess it's time for number three, which is the lobby. <laughs> so let's take them there. Can now be applied. We can see it being used for something such as digital signage. So all we have here is a smart TV, and it has the YouTube application on it. So we leave this running 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and it is literally just pulling from our live stream. Now that being said, if you wanted to be able, for power reasons, to turn off the display in the evenings, uh, you could use an Apple TV, a Roku, um, you know, the list kind of goes on and on about what you could use to pump this content. Um, but the beauty here is we've essentially done live digital signage, we've got live streaming videos, we've got tweets, we've got um, our well, donation goals going on over here. Um, it's a really nice way to do some, some pretty nifty content that people can pick up anywhere on a mobile device or yet again, use for digital signage. Okay, and the last thing, oops, nope, we don't need to go back there, is the final details, network, oh, network, admin. Oh, there's an end there. There we go. So a couple of things that I just thought of while I was watching that, Matt, mm -hmm. um, is we talked about we're using a smart TV there is no Roku TV there is no Apple TV but there are benefits to having those devices yeah so um, one of the things we briefly touched on was for that smart TV to actually show the channel appropriately um, you have to navigate to that channel every time the TV gets turned off that could be a problem for a lot of people really inconvenient um, so if you had a Roku box, an Apple TV, uh, any, any box that really can do uh, YouTube, um, you might want to think about putting that behind the display instead. That way you can turn off the display, you leave that box running 24-7 on whatever channel you've selected, and the only time you really need to touch it then is when you want to change the channel it's viewing. Um, one of the things that we haven't hit on, though, and I, I did a little research myself and couldn't find a nice way to do this. So anybody out there who watches this and is willing to help, give me your information. Um, Raspberry Pis. I tried using one for this. While it works great for pre-recorded content that's available in HTML5 via YouTube, uh, it appears that YouTube Live is not yet HTML5, that it is still Flash. Uh, so as a result, I was not able to get this working on a Raspberry Pi. But yet again, anybody else out there who has some knowledge on this, uh, maybe you can point me in the right direction of a way to get that working. So last thing I wanted to mention is our live channel that you were looking at uh, is available obviously on our website, and we're doing 24-7 live streaming. It's been really fun. A lot of like random people have been subscribing to our channel because of it, yeah. asking us questions about it. Um, so from for an advertising perspective, I definitely see a huge future in it. Um, I wanted to mention the Twitter integration. Twitter, yeah. Instagram, and Facebook integration is also a big thing. We're using vMix Social. Big, my hat is off to vMix with what they're doing with their yeah. live streaming software because we thought, should we really be capturing a digital signage cap, uh, system and then streaming that, which potentially could also be another oh, way yeah. of doing this. Um, and we were thinking, well, yeah, maybe we do because we want all these advanced features. And it turns out vMix 18 is now going to be adding what they call data sources, which will be able to pull data from Google Drive um, or Google Sheets. Yeah. And once you can get to Google Sheets, you can pretty much get anything. Yeah, it's pretty fantastic. Uh, so we're looking into right now, before vMix 18 comes out, what are those data points, those analytics that we want to pull into our live 24-7 broadcast? Because that's really what makes it come alive. Yeah. You know, it's not just static content then. Now you're actually pulling in real world 24-7 content into your 24-7 stream, and that's what makes it, you know, fresh and new for, yeah. for With people. Yeah, digital signage, if it's not fresh, you may as well have your good old bulletin board still up there. So that's everything we have. I think that was our really in-depth, full review, you know, to cover what we talked about just really briefly last time. So thanks for watching, everybody. Subscribe to our channel. Let Matt know if you know anything about HTML5. Oh, yeah, if no. you know anything about um, getting a Raspberry Pi to play Flash. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is, 
as you watch our 24-7 channel. If you have any thoughts that come to mind on ways it could be more yeah. engaging, content that's more interesting, general pointers or ideas, no promises we'll implement it all, but we are always all ears to hear any suggestions people might have. Have a nice day, everybody. Bye.